There are many different ways you can tell any given story. Like holding a prism to sunlight, you can refract light into its pure hues, helping us better understand how we see. Likewise, the way in which we relate a story can help us think through aspects of the story itself. The medium through which a narrative is communicated can operate like a prism to focus the tale and give it clarity. It can cast light on troubling or tragic testimonies, lending them lucidity. It can help enlighten us by illuminating our darkening world, multiplying our perception. The ongoing refugee crisis unfolding across Europe, the Middle East and North Africa. This is not just one story, it is a series of stories. As many different stories as there are refugees and the people who help or hinder them along their way to safety. Three years ago, as the wave of migration began to rise, I asked myself whether there was a way of engaging all these complex narratives of human displacement in a more adequate way. As the filmmaker Werner Herzog once said, we live in a society that has no adequate images anymore. And if we do not find adequate images and an adequate language for our civilization with which to express them, we will die out like the dinosaurs. Herzog was talking about environmental collapse, a theme that runs through many of his films. He continues, we have already recognized that problems like the energy shortage or the overpopulation of the world are great dangers for our society and for our kind of civilization. But I think that it has not been understood widely enough that we absolutely need new images. I understand Herzog's use of the word adequate to mean a non-reductive form, one that encompasses the ambivalence of the story in question. In relation to my own work, I was aiming for something that engages with and reveals some of the problems faced by the refugee both practically and existentially, as well as embracing the subjectivity of those receiving the refugee. As Europeans, our subjectivity is crucial to any story about refugees landing on our shores. This is because we are responsible for how we perceive the refugee crisis, for our changing attitudes towards refugees, for the Byzantine asylum process that welcomes them, and for many of the problems that force them to abandon their homes in the first place. What are these problems? They are diverse. In making this project, I intercepted two of the busiest and most perilous routes. One from the east, from the countries such as Syria, Iraq and Afghanistan, crossing Turkey and arriving in the EU on the shores of Aegean Islands, then passing through the Balkan Corridor on the route north. The other is from the south, from countries in the Sahel region, Senegal, Mali, Nigeria, Niger, Chad, Sudan, Ethiopia, Eritrea, crossing the Sahara Desert for Libya, where they attempt to cross the Mediterranean, hoping to reach Italy, often continuing north for countries such as France, Germany, the UK and other wealthy nations. Almost all the countries that refugees leave behind them lie on desert thresholds. All these nations lie on the front line of climate change, their arable lands losing ground to the encroaching desert making human life unlivable and often fomenting war, insurgency and other forms of conflict. Eyal Weissmann has recently made an excellent case for the reciprocal correlation of conflict and environmental change, particularly in areas of desertification. Our inability to manage and share the world's resources, to prevent the loss of arable lands resulting from global warming and the endless series of wars resulting from and contributing to climate change, this constellation of factors has produced a perfect storm of human displacement. While struggling with these ideas and searching for a more adequate strategy to represent them, I accidentally came across a new camera technology which seemed to speak to many of these concepts. Ambivalence, subjectivity, perception, body heat, mortality, borders, insurgency, climate change and war. What I found was that if you add up all these factors, plus photography, if you smelt them down and cast this metal in the form of a camera, you get a specific kind of imaging technology. And this was a powerful military thermal imaging device that sees heat and can image the body from a distance of 30.3 kilometers. This camera was specifically designed by a multinational weapons company for use by militaries and police forces for battlefield situational awareness and long range border enforcement. Employed for both search and rescue, as well as insurgent detection, it can also be used as part of advanced weapon systems for tracking and targeting the enemy. 
I began to work with this camera alongside a team of collaborators, the cinematographer Trevor Tweeton and the composer Ben Frost. We tried to work against the camera's original purpose, to use it against itself, to more adequately tell the stories of the journeys of refugees landing on Europe's shores, one that we hoped would engage with all of these aspects. This idea of heat, imaging heat, which we hoped would speak sideways about human displacement resulting from climate change and global warming. It also spoke more practically, even indexically, about the struggle of the refugee. To lose one's home is to lose many things, but primarily one loses warmth. In the Irish language, we have a proverb, Ní lén tintán mar hintán fain. This is our way of saying there's no place like home, but it translates as there's no hearth like your own hearth. The hearth, the floor of the fireplace, the hottest part of the home, is at the centre of the very idea of home. Refugees leave everything behind, especially the home. They literally leave the heat behind them, and they expose themselves to the elements, the cold sea waves, the winter rain and the snow. Homes are replaced with tents and shelters. People die of exposure. Light is visible heat. Light fades. Heat grows cold. People's attention drifts. Media attention dwindles. Compassion is eventually exhausted. I leave you with the question, how do we find a way as photographers and as storytellers to continue to shed light on the refugee crisis and to keep the heat on these important narratives of human displacement? If we can find a way to do this, then perhaps we can preserve our own humanity and sustain our warmth as humans.
There's no water coming out. There's no water coming out. Okay, do more breathings. Okay. Five more breathings. Okay. Can I give 10 more compressions? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48